Welcome back for another video. So this week in living in Mexico, I'm going to talk to you guys about some something that's very important and will infect, uh, affect your health when you first get to Mexico, and that's food. As you've probably heard, uh, Mexico has some of the best food on the planet, and it is true. You know, I've been here for almost 12 years now. And I've tried almost everything that is, I find palatable. But there are some things that you need to know when you first get to Mexico, what to do and what not to do because it could end you up in the hospital pretty quick or just simply turning you off of a lot of foods here. And so I'm going to give you guys some tips on what to eat, what not to eat, and what to look out for when uh, wanting to eat out. So without further ado, let's get started. When you first get to Mexico, you're going to see all kinds of different types of food. Uh, and you're going to, of course, want to try it. It's going to look delicious. However, our system is not used to the types of ingredients that they use in foods here and it can hit you pretty hard and have some fairly serious consequences. When I first got here, I made that mistake. I went out uh, to the local market and usually in the center of, of any town or city, you're going to find uh, a lot of places to eat. And here in Mexico, uh, some of the most famous places that you can find to eat are ambulatory uh, food posts or carts, uh, like tacos and things like that. And you'll see people at night, mostly, just crowded around certain spots. And you think, wow, that must be good. So you want to get in and, and try out the food. Well, my first piece of advice would be to start slow. Just try a couple of tacos, for example, and see how it affects your body. Because they have things like, uh, for example, chorizo. Chorizo here is really greasy. There's a lot of grease. Also... A lot of, if you go to a good taco place, uh, you'll find that the tortillas are made by hand and they're made from actual corn, right? They, they get the grain, the corn grains, they grind them down into almost a, a, a dust, a, 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 what do you call it? Yeah, like a dust. And they add water and with that they make the tortillas. They're really, really good, but for us, they're very, very heavy on the stomach. So that's something you want to watch out for. Also, they use a, a type of fat here called manteca. And what it is is basically uh, pig fat that they tend to dip the tortillas in before they, they warm them up. And they do it with a lot of food here. Uh, there are things called uh, tlacuaches, um, gorditas, um, guaraches, things like that that are, are cooked in manteca. And it's going to do some serious damage to your stomach because we aren't used to that type of fat. We're a lot more healthy in, in terms of the amount of grease that we intake. And here food is very greasy. I made the mistake. I went to a, a local market and I started eating everything I could see. I started tlacuaches, um, uh, tacos de barbacoa de borrego, which is... Um, Barbacoa de Borrego in Hidalgo is really famous because it is cooked in, in the ground and it, it's delicious. However, like I said, our system is not used to that. We're used to very lean meats um, and the stereotypical you know, uh, beef 
and chicken and we tend to shy away from pork. And here they use a lot of pork and um, and of course the manteca. And in the first mm, probably six months that I was here, I was in the hospital four times and I lost probably a good 40 pounds from diarrhea, uh, vomiting. I was just really sick. It really upset my, my system. And they call it the revenge of Moctezuma. And it is bad. I mean, you, people laugh and they think, ha ha ha, you know, you got diarrhea from the food, you can't handle the food. But it's actually quite serious. And also, uh, if you're a person that likes spicy food, be very careful with salsas here because if you ask them is this spicy nine times out of ten they're gonna say no it's not spicy because for them it's not for us what we consider spicy is no spice to them uh, so for example if your idea of spicy is uh, black pepper or a little bit of Tabasco sauce you're not going to cut it. So be really careful. Uh, I had to learn to sniff the salsas first because you can smell that it's really spicy or how spicy it actually is. And then try a little bit first and then eat it. Because what will happen is you get uh, an acid reflux or a really upset stomach because of the the um, the mix of the grease, the heaviness of the tortillas, and the spiciness of the salsas, and it can cause some really serious damage to your system the, as it's trying to adjust to the food here. Also, make sure that when you buy something from somewhere, like a, a, a food stand, that if you're going to buy the meat, it's one of those stands that's there all day. Buy the meat in the morning because that meat, nine times out of ten in a lot of places, is has just been sitting there all day. So the later in the day that you eat that, that meat, the higher the chances that you're going to get a, a stomach infection and you're going to end up on a liquid diet and pooping your brains out for a good three four days at least and it happened to me a lot and it ended up to the point where the doctor just told me you can't eat greasy food you can't eat anything spicy and I ended up getting used to a, a very bland diet is basically is what I was used to living in Canada <clears throat> my dad loves spicy food he can't get enough spice I mean uh, he used to make a, a a five alarm chili which would have almost eaten out the the bottom of a pan and he would eat it like nothing it, maybe it would sweat a little bit but he loved it and nobody else could eat it but him and uh, it's if you're that type of person then you're not going to have much to worry about uh, also be careful on in restaurants they have little bowls and sometimes they'll have salsas, but they'll also have what looks like onions and uh, peppers in vinegar. And people, you'll see people putting that on their tacos. Those aren't peppers as in bell peppers. They're peppers as in, um, not jalapeno, um, ah, they're super, super spicy ones. I can't think of the name right now. And we were just talking about it about half an hour ago. Um, I don't know, it'll come to me in a minute. But uh, they're really, 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 really spicy. And it probably about at least five to ten times spicier than uh, a jalapeno. And so really be careful with that. If you're not a person that can handle a lot of uh, spicy food, then you're going to want to look for... Um, um, guacamole which is generally really good uh, in most cases they don't put chili in it or they'll put maybe half a chili one chili in it and you can kind of suffer through it 
or it it ends up being really good. Um, but yeah, the food is very uh, it's varied here. Like every, like I said in a previous video, I think in my first video, is that every state has a, a typical dish. But I'm going to touch on some of the the more typical dishes across the country. Uh, one of which would be pozole. Pozole is like a soup. Um, it has garbanzo beans and uh, chicken or pork in it. And in certain places it's really good. In others it's like dishwater. Uh, so again, you have to kind of try a couple different places and find one that you like. Um, if you're in Mexico City, you're going to find a plethora of different types of foods. Uh, some that I really like are uh, tortas de... Bueno, they're basically... Um, how would you explain it? Kind of like a, it's a, a bun. Almost like a subway bun, but a little smaller. And they put... Um, uh, my English is failing me. I've been speaking too much Spanish. Uh, mashed potatoes. And I really, really like those because I love potatoes. I think that's, I, I don't know if that's a, a stereotypical Canadian thing, but I, I can't get enough of potatoes. Um, they also have, you know, tacos of all different types. You have chorizo. Barbacoa. Barbacoa is different depending on where you are in the country. Uh, there's barbacoa de borrego and barbacoa de res. Borrego is sheep, res is cow. And more in the northern part of the country, they have barbacoa de res, which is basically a, a, a cut of meat that is boiled to death and then they chop it up and sometimes they'll put spice in it. Sometimes it can be really good, but I personally it's not my thing. I don't really like it because it doesn't have much flavor. Uh, there's also uh, tor uh, tacos uh, of chicken in some places that you can get. Um, bistec, which can be really good uh, depending on where you buy it. Um, bistec is I, I hope, I've always thought it, it's uh, beef, and, but it's, it's spiced up, and it's really, really good. One of my favorites. Um, what else? Okay, <laughs> now this I learned by accident, because here in, in November, December, they start having um, kind of like little parties where families get together and they celebrate the holiday season. And it's generally because of a lot of Catholic um, events and holidays during the, the holiday seasons. And so they get together and they celebrate it and it's continuous. Basically, I think it's from the 18th of November to about the 7th of January. Pretty much during the holiday season for the kids from school. And I was at one, and the family had one of the family members had a taco cart, so he brought it, and there was chicken, um, bistec, and chorizo. Now, you could get them combined, which um, which I heard people doing. They were asking for um, uh, campechano, which is like everything mixed. And I thought, oh, I'm going to try that. And it was really good. So after I had that, I went to another place uh, with some friends to have dinner. And I thought, oh, I'm going to ask for cappuccino. Well, cappuccino means a mix of everything. right? So they put a little bit of everything in there that they sell. Or a typical mix from each uh, taqueria, which is a taco uh place. And so I got my tacos and I, st I took a bite and 
the flavor was off. There was something wrong. And I was like, this isn't cappuccino. And they're like, they took a look at it and they say, yeah. And I'm like, well, it tastes funny. They said, oh, well, it's probably got um, seso or, or tripa. All right. Seso is brains and tripa is uh, intestines. And I just about threw up. I, I, I don't like any of that stuff. I don't like the flavor. I don't like the smell and just the idea of it as well. Just no. Thank you. And so you have to be careful when you order tacos. If you're just into, you know, the typical meats that we normally eat, then make sure that's what you're getting. Don't ask for seso, tripa, machitas, which is basically uh, uh, bulls, testicles, cooked and chopped up. Um, ojo, eye, lengua, tongue, right? So they don't waste anything on the animal and they will use it in tacos. And my wife loves machitos, she likes tripa. There's also sangre, uh, which uh, translates to blood. I haven't quite figured out what it is because I, I've only seen it so far in Hidalgo, in the state of Hidalgo. I haven't seen it here in San Luis Potosí. But what I gathered is it's kind of like a blood sausage chopped up and that's your taco. Um, what else? Um, oh, when in um, some places, when you have a, a chicken soup, that chicken soup uses every part of the chicken, which is the feet, the head, and they boil it all up. And you'll see people just gnawing on the feet, getting the little bit of uh, skin that's on the leg. That I mean, the, they cut it the leg there, and then. You know, they, it's got the claws and everything. And I went to a birthday party for one of my students. They invited me and the parents gave me chicken soup. And I was talking with someone. My soup arrived and I didn't notice it. When I looked at it, there was a chicken head sitting there staring at me with the feet sticking out like that. Apparently, it's, um, it's an honor to be given that. They give that to the guest of honor, typically. And I, instead of being, you know, thankful for what I got, I was like, oh, get that out of my bowl. And so my girlfriend at the time, she grabbed it quickly and, you know, just like, there, there, you can eat it. And it kind of grossed me out to eat the soup, but I ate it. But, yeah, it's you'll see people chewing on chicken feet everywhere. And if you've ever grown up uh, as a kid, if you clean chicken pens... Uh, for extra money during the summers and you see where the chickens are scratching and they live and then you relate that to the feet I don't care how well you clean that there is no way I'm eating that and yeah I'm not into the whole eating the heads thing uh, brains and all they do the same thing with fish we're used to getting the the fillet so we cut off the head and the tail we got the fillet, you know, of course you clean it all out and everything. Here they will take everything out of the fish most of the time and just and they'll cook the entire fish. And there's a, a bass that they they cook called mojarra. Or sorry, not a bass carp. And um, they fry it. And I call it a zombie fish because it comes with the head and everything and it's it just it looks like a decomposing fish with the uh, blued out eyes and and the the whole nine yards my wife loves it and I, I can't even look at her while she's eating the head and uh, no it's just it's nasty uh, they also eat the the hooves so they call pata so they will eat the hooves as well um, and just there are a lot when you go to any foreign country that I would say a non-developed country, um, you have to ask or be sure what it is you're eating. 
Uh, even in Vancouver, I went to a vet Vietnamese restaurant with a friend just to try something different. And I ordered, it's in the name, you're going to say, well, that's kind of stupid, but you don't re relate it because we don't think about that. So I asked for beef ball soup, thinking that it was meatballs, you know, beef, balls, meatballs, and a soup. I thought, oh, I'll try that. And so I got it and took a bite into the meat and instantly realized by the texture and the flavor that it was not a meatball. And so I called the waitress over and I'm like, uh, this is beef ball soup? She's like, yep. Like beef balls. Yeah. Beef testicles. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I think I need to brush my teeth. And my friend who was across from me was just killing himself laughing from the look on my face and my reaction to it. And he had ordered some fried rice. And on top of the fried rice came four what looked like um, uh, mushrooms. Right, those long-headed mushrooms, or it's all closed over the stem. That's what they look like. And he bit into one, and you could hear a pop in his mouth. And he just, like that, and turned out it was a sheep's eyeball. Right, so this is, <laughs> in Vancouver, would never even occurred to us that these types of things would be served as food. And, yeah, so trying any kind of foreign cuisine, you want to be sure of what you're eating. They also make uh, salsas from uh, chapulines, which are grasshoppers, I think, right? Um, and other insects that you'll find. And they say it's really good. Apparently, once they didn't tell me it's what I was eating and I ate it and liked it. But... Um, I don't know if they're, they were just joking with me or what, but I don't want to know, right? And if the flavor is good, fine, I'll eat it. But if the texture and the flavor is noticeably something that I have never experienced before, I'm going to ask, like, what is this? And nine times out of ten, it's going to be some part of the inside of the animal. <clears throat> so there's all these things that, that you need to kind of take into consideration. Now, when you go out to eat, you're going to want to look for uh, a few cues as to whether or not it's a good place to eat. One of it is the amount of people that are there. Right? We generally tend to look for, or at least I do, uh, tend to look for quiet places. I like to be in a a fairly quiet place and eat. I don't like a lot of noise and talking and ruckus while I'm eating. It says me and maybe. Um, but here, that is an indicator that the food is good, generally going to be fresh, and the price is good. Right? If you see a place where, you know, it's typically the hour where everybody's out eating and there's a place with nobody there, then you may want to question the quality of the food and or the prices. So that's really something you need to take into account. Generally, you can ask someone like, where's a good place to have tacos? Or where's a good place to get um, a steak, which is a cortes? Here, meat is really expensive. I mean, maybe coming from another country here, you're like, oh, it's fairly cheap. But for Mexicans, meat is generally expensive. If you go to uh, a grocery store and you buy meat right now, especially um, chicken breast is up over 100 pesos for just one single chicken breast. To put that into perspective, you could go to what's called a, a Cocina Económica which is like a kind of a mom and pop type of restaurant where you get uh, a, what you could consider a homemade meal for 35 to 50 pesos. Okay, and that's a whole meal. That's uh, your 
meat, side, uh, something to drink, and sometimes as well a dessert. Right? So you can do that and one chicken breast is over 100 pesos. So you can see where a lot of people eat out and it's actually cheaper in, in a lot of cases um, simply because of that. Tacos, for example, you can get, uh, depending on the state, when I was in Hidalgo six, what, six years ago now, uh, you can get five tacos for 20 pesos. That's really good. Uh, but here in San Luis Potosí, generally you're looking at one taco for anywhere between six to ten pesos, depending on where you go. So it's still reasonably cheap if you know you and your wife or girlfriend or whatever you go out to eat and you eat five tacos each you can pay up to 50 pesos each for your tacos so 100 pesos plus your drinks so maybe up to 150 pesos for two people to eat which isn't bad right it's actually pretty good um, but yeah so those are things that you want to take into account. Also one thing you'll notice with food here is Mexicans eat a lot. I call them hobbits for their not for their size or anything but because they eat so much. Here they're they eat about five times a day. Now I was I still am used to eating only three times a day breakfast lunch and dinner or even twice a day a, a big brunch and a big dinner. Right? I don't eat generally anything in between meals. That's it. But here they will have breakfast. Breakfast for a lot of people is a glass of milk and a bolillo, which is a bun. Right? And that's what, what their breakfast is. Kind of strange, I know. Then they will have something in between. Um, generally something a little lighter. They have their lunch. They'll have something in between lunch and dinner. Then they will have their dinner. And oftentimes they'll have something after the dinner as well, kind of like a snack or a second dinner. And uh, it always reminds me of the, the part in uh, Lord of the Rings where they go, well, when are we going to eat? Well, we already had breakfast. Yeah, what about second breakfast? Right? I, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing where they're constantly eating here and I don't know whether whether it can be the correlation but the obesity in Mexico is insane they say what 60 percent of Mexicans adult Mexicans are overweight so yeah and that's part of the reason why COVID is hitting Mexico so hard right now um, <clears throat> And yeah, the eating hours are just strange. Um, dinner is generally between 8 to 11 o'clock at night. I'm used to, you know, breakfast. If I'm up for breakfast, I eat breakfast around 8 o'clock or maybe earlier between 6 to 8, depending on what time I, I get into work. Uh, then lunch uh, around 12 to 1 o'clock and dinner between 5 to 6.37, depending on when I get home. And that's it. But here it's uh, breakfast around 7, 8 o'clock, maybe 9, maybe even 10. Then lunch, then something in between lunch uh, and dinner. They'll even have maybe even two meals or, or snacks in between the time for dinner because they eat dinner so late and then they go to bed so it's it's like oh my god how how can <laughs> how can you eat tacos which is the, of course the most popular all across mexico and then just go and jump in the bed I, I don't get how they can do that um other typical dishes uh pambasos that's what they're called. Sorry, I'm referring to the first part in Mexico City. They have the buns with the mashed potato. They're called pambasos. Um, they, uh, during 
uh, near Independence Day, if I remember correctly. In some states, they have what's called chalupas, which are really good. They're like uh, a hard tortilla with uh, sour cream, chicken, um, lettuce, and um, radish with cheese sprinkled on top. And it's heated up. And like I said, it's been a while, but last time I got them, they were, what was it, 10 for 45 pesos, 50 pesos? Which was pretty good. And um, that's, yeah, generally around Independence Day, I believe, in certain states. Like I said, each state has uh, different foods. And uh, I really, really like the food in Hidalgo. Here in San Luis Potosí, I'm not such a big fan. Um, here they have what they call enchiladas potosinos. People in San Luis Potosí are called potosinos. And basically what it is, it's a tortilla folded and salsa put over it. With maybe some cheese or something. And sorry, but I want something inside my tortilla. If I just wanted to eat a tortilla with salsa, I'd just grab them, put some salsa inside, and that's it. And they'll charge you for three, 35, 40 pesos. So, you know, it's, I don't know. Ah, okay. Now, like I said, be careful when you're trying these things. But one thing you really need to try when you're here is mole. It's, there are a lot of different types throughout the country. There, uh, the mole itself is a sauce and it is really elaborate to make. People will spend an entire day either during or the day of the food or the day before so it's not so heavy creating it. But um, it's actually, it's delicious. Typically served with um, chicken. There is a type of mole called piquin that's served with pork or beef, uh, but the the typical is, uh, from what I've encountered, is chicken. And it is really, really good. You get rice with it, and, you know, I like to mix everything up, so I'll mix the mole in with my rice, and I'll eat that, and I'm just happy as a clam. And it's, like I said, you'll find different uh, recipes for mole all across the country. There's a green mole, there's a... Uh, a mole made with chocolate. I'm slightly allergic to chocolate. It burns my throat like acid, so I tend to get stay away from that. Um, there's a mole with almonds. There's tons of different types, and even each family will have their own mole recipe. So you could have, you know, they'll say, oh, it's a chocolate mole, but each one has a different flavor because each person has their own um, has their own recipe for it and yeah it's like I said there are a lot of lot of things that that you're gonna want to try um, and the food is really good it's really varied but just go slow check things out I would recommend first trying the non-greasy foods um, like um, uh, chiles rellenos for example it's a chile poblano which is a green chili a long chili it kind of looks like a cross between uh, a green pepper and a jalapeno in the shape because it's big but it's kind of shaped almost like a jalapeno and as well a very uh, time-consuming meal to create because they have to um, basically cook the the chili they, they pretty much burn the outside and then they put it in a bag and leave it till it starts to cool down they take the skin off of the outside and then they fill the inside depending on uh, where or who is preparing it but uh, the ones that I've had typically are uh, hamburger with um, potato, 
sometimes corn uh, and cheese and then they they have to cut it and fill it they put in uh, uh, toothpicks to hold it together then they have to make a salsa to cook it in and then they cook it for a pretty good time and then they serve it and it's amazing uh, so there are a lot of non-greasy, non-fatty dishes that you can try that are really, really good. Um, and try to avoid, you know, just consuming everything you see to start with. Start, you know, maybe if you're a little full already, you not don't really want to eat and try something, you know because it's not going to fill you up, just try one of something, see how it is, see how your body reacts, and um, and just enjoy it. Um, drinks, there in the state of Hidalgo specifically, you're going to find a drink that's called pulque. They say it's the drink of the gods. Now, it the appearance of it is not <clears throat> it turns a lot of people off because it, it looks kind of like um, snot or sperm it's this, this white thick liquid from the agave plant or uh, maguey and they let it ferment and then after the fermentation is done then they they filter it out and there's your pulque. Uh, it, it knocks a lot of people on their asses. Me, personally, I don't know why, it doesn't do anything to me. I drank up to four liters because people wanted to get me drunk off of pulque and I just kept drinking it, drinking it, drinking it, nothing. Um, however, it can give you the shits the day after. Um, there's also mezcal. I prefer mezcal over tequila because tequila tends to have a kind of a burnt flavor where they they actually roast the agave and so I don't like that flavor but the mezcal doesn't have it and it's just as strong if not stronger than tequila and it comes curado which means that um, it's made with a bunch of different flavors in Mexico City I went to a bar, there was a mezcal bar, and they had a, a list like this of all different flavors of mezcal, and I tried about four or five and I could barely even walk when I was leaving. It was really good. And tends not to give you a hangover the day after. Um, tequila as well, I mean you can find tequilas to your liking here. There are more types of tequila than you can shake a stick at. Jose Cuervo is not the best of the best tequilas. Actually, people tend not to buy Jose Cuervo here. There are a lot better tequilas. Uh, a very nice, smooth tequila that I found is called Azul, which means blue in, in uh, Spanish. And it comes from the blue agave plant. And really smooth, really good. And it's fairly cheap. You can buy it in... Uh, any OXO here which is the equivalent of a 7-Eleven and you can find them everywhere and uh, yeah so those are the the main and whiskey you can find a lot of whiskey here people really tend to like whiskey not so much the rum I don't know why I love rum so yeah my who am I kidding I I really don't like there there are very few alcohols that I don't like so but again, everything in uh, quantities, small quantities. So I guess, yeah, that's the main motto here is coming to Mexico or any other foreign country, everything in small quantities, try it out, see how it affects your body, see how you like it. Then if you're good to go, give her. But at the beginning, yeah, just take your time. You're going to be wowed by the amount of foods that you, that you have a choice of. Uh, we're used to very standard type foods, very limited menus, unless you start going to uh, foreign restaurants, you know, Thai food, Chinese food, uh, Indian food, whatever. But here, 
you can try something different every day of the week and you're going to be surprised. So yeah, not to drag on too much. So uh, those are my main uh, recommendations. And you know, if you've tried any Mexican food other than tacos, by the way, hard tortilla shells, the U-shaped ones, are not tacos. Those aren't tacos, period. I don't know where those came from. Uh, I used to love them, and I would just buy the shells themselves and eat them because I just I love the, the corn flavor. You will never find those here in Mexico. They don't even know what they are unless they've actually been to the States and gone to Taco Bell or something like that. But those are not tacos. Okay, so you will never find those here. Tacos are just round tortillas, stuff put in them, you fold them up, and you eat them. Generally, you, you hold the top and you eat them like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, so, yeah. Um, yeah, any questions, any comments, feel free. Um, I, thumbs up on the videos, I really appreciate. And if you're new to the channel, I would appreciate a subscribe. That helps out my, my channel as well. As well, it gives me an indication that people are interested in what I'm doing. And, uh, and commenting uh, so far it has been Michael and I can't remember your name. Uh, down starts with a D. It's I can't remember. I, I'm sorry, but so far out of my 26 subscribers, uh, I've only received comments from two people. So um, feel free to chime in. Feel free to. Uh, to leave a suggestion for a future video. Like I said, right now we're in um, red for COVID. Uh, the people just, it's not sinking in their heads. People still aren't out with face masks. The contagion is out of control. People are dying. Friends are dying. And it's just, it's really insane. But once things start to calm down and I can get out and about, I'll start showing you uh, the things that I've been talking about so far, like, you know, going to food carts and uh, different parts of the city, different areas, because we want to do some traveling. We've been, we generally tend to travel every three to four months. Sometimes we'll even do it on a weekend. If it's a long weekend, we can get away. So there'll be a lot of videos on traveling around the, the state and hopefully to other places. My wife is from Acapulco, so every once in a while when we can, we travel down to Acapulco, but it's an 11-hour drive from here. So, um, But yeah, I, I do want to include more content. It's just with everything that's going on right now, it's really difficult. So please bear with me and uh, take care of yourselves, and I will see you next week. So long. Thank you.